Another important aspect of your overall project plan for the pen testing engagement and part of the agreement into which you enter with your client should specify the resources and the requirements for the entire engagement. What resources do you need in order to conduct the engagement and who provides those? Do you provide all the resources or does the client? Now clearly the client will be providing the targets, so that's a resource that you're going to be attacking, but you're going to have to have some sort of iron in order to attack. You know, you've got some hardware there you use to attack and some software as well. Who provides that? Do you use your own laptops, which I definitely prefer. I want to bring my own stuff into the game because I have my own pen testing lab already built. I have several different versions that I build to use in different environments. Uh, some are, win are Windows based, some are Linux based, and we're going to get into that a little bit later. But what do you bring to the testing environment. Do you provide your own laptops? What about uh, any other devices such as Raspberry Pis or mobile devices, uh, tablets? Or is the client going to, re to require you to use only their devices to conduct the activity? So you want to clarify that and make sure that both sides are comfortable with what each other would be providing. Also, you need to ask the question, when does the test actually begin? Because the test may begin from the time you sign the paper, if it includes social engineering and physical exploits. Or it may begin once you're already in there, sitting, connected to the network, and you're going to pretend to be an insider. Either way, you want to make sure that the client understands when the test begins. Because if they expect it to begin at one point, but yet you are compromising their physical security to get in, there could be some misunderstandings between you and the client. So again, agree to when it begins. Further, one thing that you may end up doing or likely will end up doing is having access to restricted resources. That's the whole idea. A pen test is an endeavor in which you, the penetration tester, try to act like an attacker to get inside some environment to access resources that you don't have access to. Those resources may involve intellectual property that's conf confidential or at least sensitive. So when you do that, you want to make sure to protect the confidentiality of those resources, whatever your findings are. And sometimes your findings are not necessarily uh, divulging information or, or grabbing and having access to sensitive information. The finding itself may be confidential. So you want to make sure that your agreement with your client covers that, but just as a penetration tester, you're cognizant of information that you possess has, could very well be sensitive in nature, and you want to protect that and take steps to protect it. For example, a current news story covered that exact point. There was a military installation that allowed confidential military planning information to be divulged simply because an administrator forgot to change the default configured FTP password. So basically, because of a lack of administrative oversight, confidential information was basically divulged to an attacker. That's something that you've got to be very, very careful about. Make sure that if you were the one as a pen tester to find out that secured information was not controlled or not guarded by a proper FTP password, you have information that an attacker could use. That information is confidential information. Even though you don't have the confidential information that the FTP site holds, the fact that you have an exploit in your hands means that you hold confidential information. So as a pen tester, you have to make sure that you keep the resources that you access confidential and also the exploit methods that were successful confidential because you don't want attackers to find out what you found and then use your exploits to attack the system. The idea is to protect the, the client, not to make them more vulnerable. And lastly, we're talking about confidentiality, then there's a the question of, is your test confidential or not? In other words, does the client know that you're there to perform a penetration test? Now, clearly, the sponsor of the project knows, the person who's signing your checks, they know, but does everyone else or anyone else in the organization know? If everyone knows that you're there to conduct a penetration test, they're probably going to be more careful. And if most people don't know, you could actually slide in and see how things operate probably more in a normal uh, manner and 
perhaps you'll be more successful at catching things that people that are on guard would not allow you to catch. So you've got to clear that up. Who knows about the test so that you don't tip your hand. If it's supposed to be a secret test, you don't walk in going, yeah, I'm here to do my penetration test. So be aware that those are additional things you want to clear up up front in the project plan and the agreement as well. Another incredibly important aspect of managing any project, and certainly a pen testing project, is the budget. How much money do you have and how much is required? It's important to understand how much every section of your pen test is going to cost because every section does have a cost associated with it. You might have to purchase some resources. Maybe you have to license some software. You certainly have to invest time, yours, maybe someone else's. So you have to have a good understanding of how much every piece of the pen test costs because as you expand the scope, you're also going to expand the necessary budget. Your client may come back to you, and we talked about scope creep a little bit earlier. Your client may come back and ask for more tests, and you can easily say, yes, I'll be glad to give you more tests, but it's going to cost this much more money. And then you ask, is it worth it? And if they ask, actually say, sure, do the extra tests, we'll pay for it, then you can increase the budget based on the new scope. So it's very important to manage that scope because it's very tightly tied to budget. In fact, what you'll find is budget is probably one of the most important aspects of an entire penetration testing project. There are many things you have to control, but if you don't control the budget, you'll end up going over budget or maybe having to give away time for free. You never want to do that. So make sure that you look at budget within the context of all of your plans. Understand how much everything costs throughout the entire project plan.